Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the SU25 Frogfoot, the non-T version, and we're looking at navigation, including INS general purpose steer point navigation and ILS approach and landing for IFR conditions. Basically all of the types of navigation that this aircraft has. The first thing I want to show you is to put the INS steer point or waypoint in. You can only do that from the mission editor. This is what we call a low fidelity aircraft and we have to do it from the mission editor. So we're going to add waypoints here. We're going to click on our guy. We're going to go add. We're going to add one waypoint there. That is going to be waypoint one in the DCS mission editor. It's actually going to be waypoint two in the actual frog foot itself because the Z starting waypoint will actually be waypoint or steer point one in the plane itself and when we're going to have another one we're going to put about there and that will do for us today that's us there that's with our starting waypoint that's with our next waypoint that's with our next waypoint the next position we will navigate to will be that point there known as a fix or approach point about 10 nautical miles off the threshold of the runway and then the next not waypoint per se but point of interest will be on the threshold of the runway and we're going to navigate between those different points in different ways the next thing i want to show is that the steer points one and two here are going to have an associated altitude with them. So this one is going to have 4,500 meters, that's ASL. This one's going to have, say, 4,000 meters and there. So as well as a, a lat long position, they have an altitude ASL as well. And we'll get that guidance come through into our cockpit. The fixed point position there is associated as, as part of this airfield here. So we don't need to add anything here. It's already in the memory banks of the airplane when you join this uh, Persian Gulf map in this case, whatever map you're going to. The ILS part of information is again going to be stored with this runway here. So we'll navigate from our starting point to this waypoint here with our onboard INS steer point, then that point there with our onboard INS steer point, then that here with our offboard fixed point location, and then the final approach and landing will be with our ILS. So we'll have to hook into the ILS beam that's coming from the runway here. So lots of different types of navigation. Now this would be fairly complex if this were a truly model aircraft like the MiG-21, the L-39, because this is a low fidelity aircraft, 95% of it is automated for you, which is great for learning this kind of thing and getting the basics of it down. So we're going to save and we're going to jump into the mission. So let's look at instrumentation. It's all pretty simple. We've got a HSI here, horizontal situation indicator. We've got an ADI here, attitude director indicator, and we've got our distance here to our current selected point of interest. We've got our navigation panel down here, waypoint one, or should I say steer point one, steer point two, steer point three. And we've got our airfields, airfield one, airfield two, airfield three, airfield four. We've got our return mode there. Note that the airfields are automatically populated and they're populated by distance. It's something you shouldn't have to mess around with. So we've only got a few controls we need to look at today, which is nice and simple. The one key will cycle between four navigation modes. Also, we will need previous waypoint, and next waypoint. So when we press the one key, we can cycle between four different navigation modes. It's actually quite difficult to know which mode you're in, so you just have to memorize these lights. If we are showing a steer point light only, that is that, that, or that, then we know that we are in route mode. Route mode allows us to navigate between our preset waypoints or steer points that we showed in the mission editor. If we press the one key again, this light comes on here and one of the airfield lights comes on. That means we're in return mode. That will take us from wherever we are at the moment to the fixed point or the approach point of the runway about 10 miles off the runway as we saw there. If we press one again, we get landing mode, otherwise known as ILS, instrument landing system. You'll see now that one of the airfields, or the selected airfield in this particular case, is chosen and the return mode light is off. That's how we know we're in ILS. If we press one again, we have no lights at all. This is called no task mode and this means we have no navigation at all. Press one, back to our initial mode, which is route mode. This is going to take us to our waypoints. Now let's have a little look here at our symbology a little closer. We have here our HSI. We have our compass rows around the outside. The direction we are flying is where this arrow is pointing here so we're currently flying a uh, magnetic or actually I think of this would be a true flaming cliffs three plane of one zero zero we've actually got twin needles in here at the moment so these are actually two separate needles but basically at the moment they're, they're telling us to get to our selected waypoint which in this case is 
two here, our second waypoint. We need to go travel at this direction. It just so happens we've actually started in this direction. So it is directly ahead of us, which is good. We have our PRMG or ILS flags here, a K and a Russian R there. This will come in later when we have to capture the ILS or simulated PRMG beam, which we'll have a look at in a bit later. Here is a distance in kilometers to our selected steer point or point of interest. ADI is a basic artificial horizon. You can see you've got roll indicator, you've got pitch indicator. As well as that, we've got a localizer guidance here for navigation and a glide slope guidance here for navigation. This will be relevant to all three of the navigation modes, excluding the no task mode, to give us azimuth guidance and elevation guidance. In terms of route mode, flying the INS waypoints, we can only use the HSI here for azimuth information for getting the right heading. The ADI here can give us information on azimuth and altitude as well, or elevation. So that's going to be the difference between these two. As well as that, from the ADI we can get information on course. We went here, clicked on our guy here. You can see that's our second waypoint, and that's our third INS waypoint. As well as travelling to that waypoint, we need to travel on course, or we may need to travel on course. That means actually travelling down where this dotted line is. We could get to that waypoint by going all the way out here. That is still getting to that waypoint, but that is not sticking to the course. So if we wanted to stick to the course here, in this case, we would be using our ADI here to ensure that we stay on course. I've just noticed that it's uh, selected a different waypoint when we did that, so I'm going to put us back. Oh, we've accidentally pressed the one key. So that, no task. Back to route mode. Right, so we're back to uh, the second waypoint now. So to reiterate, azimuth information can come from course as well as heading on here, whereas the HSI on this mode is going to be heading only. So we're going to unpause. We want to fly our ADI so that we basically get the glide slope and the localizer in the center position here to ensure that we're getting on A, the heading, B, the course, C, the correct altitude associated with that INS steer point or waypoint. And just to tally, make sure everything's correct, we can also double check on HSI, our correct heading here. What they're saying is we are too high, we need to go down. And we've got 23 kilometers to do it, which should be no problem at all. We're heading down. See that glide slope start to rise up now. You can see we're getting information on azimuth from the ADI here. That's because we're sliding off course slightly. So we're going to go left, wings left a little. Okay, we've got those two yellow lines pretty much centered in the ADI now. Cruise speed is good. And we've got it centered lovely there. So we're going to hold altitude there to check our VSI. We've actually gone to low there. So we can use our VSI here as well to make sure that we don't overshoot the glide slope, which is a Typical thing for me to do, 17 kilometers to go. Everything's tallied up now. We've got these two guys crossed here. We've got our HSI shown here, and we're still in route mode, and we've got 16 kilometers to go. We can now speed the game up. And in doing so, I've lost some altitude, so let me just correct that. Also slipped right off course slightly, so let's get that corrected. There we go. Speed up again. Now when we get to this waypoint, it will automatically update to our next waypoint, as you'll see. Just keep on course, heading, and altitude here. I've gone below a bit. It's uh, quite difficult to do when you speed up, because uh, trim goes a bit funny. Four kilometers to go. Two kilometers to go. Let's get that VSI level there. Prepare to go to the next waypoint. And it's changed to the next waypoint. If we just quickly pause there, you can show our HSI is now pointing to our next steer point selected. We are now on this steer point, as the plane calls it, steer point three. As the mission editor calls it, steer point two. We can see also our localizer is showing to turn left to get on course and heading. And our glide slope is lower down because I put that waypoint lower down. We've got 14 kilometers to get on task for that. So let's go. Let's make a roll to the left. And we want to lose altitude, so VSI, we want to go down. So what we've done, we've actually, um, interestingly, you can see that we're now heading left of the target, but the localizer is telling us to head even further left, even though the HSI is telling us to turn right. And that's because we've shot over the course of the waypoint, which I'll try and show you here. You can see the course is from there to there, and I've shot over here. So it needs to correct that that localizer here is going to correct me left even further to get back on course. Uh, it may be important to stay on course on a, on a waypoint. It may not. That depends on your mission. So I'm going to keep wings left until it tells me not to. 
distance is 11, 11 kilometers to get this sorted out. Speed's gone slow, so let's go power on. And leveling out, and whoops, yep, okay. Keep following that localizer and glide slow. Get the VSI neutralized now. It's really hard to talk and do this at the same time. Okay, VSI is neutralized. Just need to keep chasing that localizer over. What I should have done is a preemptive merging turn onto that localizer, but that would require me to be a good pilot, which is a problem. VSI has just gone down, so we need to shape that up a bit. And we have got ourselves in a bit of a situation here, but it's okay. The waypoint is actually basically in front of us. Uh, it's telling us to go right majorly. That's because we're quite far off course because I've done some bad flying. And you can see we, we are indeed off course, but in the scheme of things, it really doesn't matter that much. So what I'm going to do is now ignore that localizer, and I'm going to start following my HSI to get to the waypoint. Okay, we're about to hit it zero kilometers and stop and i'm just going to pause it there that is the end of our ins steer point trail it's automatically put us in the next mode which is return mode which is now taking us to the fixed point 10 miles off the end of that runway now if it hadn't done it automatically then just press the one key to get to the return mode and that's going to take me somewhere about that's the runway about there and hopefully as well as take me there it's actually going to line me up with the radial of the runway it's going to do all this automatically which is very clever stuff uh, so to cursory check make sure that we're in a pro uh, sorry re return mode we are one question you're probably asking is how do you know that you've got the right airfield selected it's just basic uh, logic and this is something i need to go through actually let me just unpause a second one thing i didn't show is that we can also manually change the waypoints so in this case i've got airfield 3 selected now if i wanted to change that i could use the next a previous waypoint and i could change it and that's choosing a completely different airfield then um one that's 125 kilometers away and if i went back I'd back to r1 back again one that's 180 kilometers away and it's just cycling through all of the airfields that are in this map here and the one that it chooses naturally is going to be the closest one, which is obviously going to be this one. That's a, it's just a logic check. Uh, it doesn't actually tell you anywhere which runway name or which airfield name it is. And the same thing works with the steer points with the INS that we saw earlier. You can cycle through them, except it cycles through them sequentially rather than in terms of distance. I'm going to fly now based on the ADI exclusively here. I'm going to fly on this glide slope line here, this localizer line here, because I really want some good course information to hit that radial as well as direction information hsi is now just going to be a backup and pause off we go also bear in mind at this point we are coming in for a landing so just think about our speed we don't want to be doing a thousand kilometers an hour we need to weirdly it wants us to go up i uh, don't really know what that is it's probably because it's simulating actually a very complex set of um, navigation methods. It's simulating PRMG, uh, RSBN, different Soviet types of navigation. Um, and so in reality you'd have to step between these different types of navigation uh, manually, but on this is done automatically, so I still need to rise. So VSI up. And let's see, you see there the glide slope, every so suddenly just jumped down. That's probably because we jumped onto the next mode of navigation, whatever that is, PRMG, whatever. Um, and you can see it's jumped down now, so let's just keep going. Let's uh, just work with it. So we're going to head down now, VSI down. And we are on course. Trust the needles, trust the needle. Whatever the needle does, just trust the needle. And bearing in mind, you'd be using this if you were in IFR conditions, i.e. zero visibility. So you've got to be able to completely trust the instrument nine mi uh, kilometers until we get to our fixed point we can see the glide slope approaching now so let's start to neutralize that vsi seven kilometers to go wants us out to the right a little i'm going to neutralize that localizer and that glide slope as best i can and the reason is we've got to switch over to ils at some point uh, it's done automatically in this aircraft but you still have to be in the right place at the right time to catch the radiation beam uh, I've gone underneath the glide slope because I'm not a very good driver. A good driver will be constantly be watching his VSI, that guy there. Um, I keep taking my eyes off it because I'm stupid. Okay, two clicks out. 
from the um, that's not from the runway that's from the fixed point and we've changed we've swapped over navigation modes we're all now on ILS slash PRMG it depends which type of airfield they use different types of ILS system uh, the important things to see HSI our flags here our glide slope and our localizer or it may be the other way around I can't remember have both been quote captured unquote that means we can got the elevation and the azimuth uh, beam from that ILS system on that runway there. If only one flag was captured, then we would only get either azimuth or elevation guidance to the runway. So it's important to know that you've captured them both. The way you capture them both is to be in the right place at the right time, the right bit of area, right bit of space, which is why we had to follow the return mode to get into this correct position to capture that beam. We're now completely ignoring the HSI here. That's only now for an emergency backup. If you were flying at a air, uh, an airport in DTS, DTS that had true PRMG modeled, and there are some of those in the Caucasus, for instance, then you would get um, PRMG guidance information from a localizer, a localizer there and a glide slope there because this is not a PRMG equipped base. We will not get that. We do have an ILS equipped base here and we therefore do have the ADI uh, glide slope and localizer working. Is that realistic? I don't think that is real. But, um, just, you know, DCS, you have to do some things that aren't real uh, for it to work with the various maps. I've got 17 kilometers threshold, and that's it, really. Just going to fly the needles, and we've got to uh, think about our speed, our trim, and whatnot. Uh, so, wish me luck. Again, simple case of flying the needles here. BSI, watch the speed. I'm going to go gear down now. A little bit fast for it, but it should be okay. Wish I hadn't put gear out now, it's all shaky. Oops, we're going to shoot past the glide slope. Neutralise the VSI. Or oh, actually, we're going to have, have a small descent of about 500 feet per minute, I imagine. Trim to suit. Speed wants to come down a little bit, so air brakes are going to go out. Rate of descent is too high, let's bring that down. Rate of descent is too low. This is where you need to be a good pilot. This is where I start to struggle a lot. <laughs> you can see I'm all over the place with the with the glide uh, with the yeah the glide slope. Keep an eye on the speed with your left eye, VSI on the right eye. Just can't seem to get that rate of descent right. As soon as the bloody camera goes on. Okay, flaps are coming out now. Now this is going to balloon me up. So retrim to suit. Distance eight kilometers threshold. Okay, we've got it. It really helps when it's not shaking about all over the place. So look at that VSI, that uh, glides, uh, that ah damn it, I've gone off it. Speed too low, power on. Back on glide slope. Just got to get that rate of descent right on the VSI, which is a constant battle. Speed still too low, power on. So there's flaps. Flaps on. Oh, I put the wrong flaps on because I'm stupid. Just put the right flaps on. That feels a bit better. Right, we've got landing flaps down now. Okay, we need to get the rate of descent going. The um, localizer's good. Glide slope's bouncing all over the place, and that's just me. Get it wrong. Power. Ah, oh, stalled. <laughs> Got to keep an, eye on, keep, keep an eye on that airspeed. Too slow again. Drifted left ever so slightly. Back on glide slope. Rate of descent's now too low. The way you do this properly is you get the descent rate there perfect on the VSI and just hold it and you'll be on the glow set all the way and the speed's gone too low again and you, you bung on um, a certain speed as well to get a certain angle of attack. Um, just a bit struggling to do it at the moment all, to, all at the same time. Ah, look, you can see we're doing pretty well. Let's keep going with the uh, with the ILS under glide slope. Okay, looks like it's all coming together just at the end here. Just a little bit slow still. Okay, and that is it. Take over, visual, sync rate, we trim, flare, try and get the angle of attack, cut, those all down, parachute out. That is the full navigation suite of the SU-25. We looked at INS waypoints or steer points, how to navigate between them with the HSI and the ADI. Then the return mode, how to get to a fixed point of a selected airfield and get to that point. Then switch over to ILS mode and land in an IFR conditions. And no, it wasn't very pretty with me doing it, but you get the idea and you can see how it can easily take you down to a runway that you can't see. That's the SU-25 non-T frogfoot. I hope you enjoyed that and see you later.